Well, the big boy's on the move again. Oh, that's thrilling. That's such an amazing locomotive, one of the most beautiful things on the planet. And uh, they, they, of course, tour every year with it. But this year, 2024, they're going to be heading west. Oh, fun. And that's great because they're going to be traveling through some of the most spectacular scenery on the planet. And coming through about, I don't know, 50 million people's backyard. Oh, wow. Including us. Oh, nice. So <laughs> we're excited, and this is, this is just going to be amazing. So they're going to be departing Cheyenne June 30th at 8 a.m. and traveling over the original transcontinental line to Ogden. There will, of course, be a couple of layovers at night, probably three of them during this journey. We don't have any specific uh, dates or locations on that yet. There's not going to be a lot of public access on this trip, and I don't know if any of these layovers through Wyoming will have any public access, but at this point, I sort of doubt it. But from Ogden, they will be diverting south to Salt Lake City, and the locomotive will be on display in Salt Lake City for several days. Now from Salt Lake City, they're going to be traveling west on the old Western Pacific, the WP. And then, as they continue west, that will take them up through some of the most beautiful mountains in the world, to the Feather River Canyon and Portola, and then on to Sacramento. From Sacramento, they will be returning via the original Southern Pacific, the SP, and that means going over Donner Summit. And then on through Nevada, which means paralleling the uh, Western Pacific again, and then crossing the middle of the Great Salt Lake on the Lucene Cutoff, and then continuing on to Ogden. From Ogden, they will be traveling north on the Ogden Sub through Bear River Canyon onto the Y at McCammon. From McCammon down the original Oregon Short Line reconnecting with the Union Pacific at Granger, Wyoming. And from there, on to their home in Cheyenne. So let's take a little deeper dive into this schedule. There's a lot yet not released. We don't have a lot of specific uh, locations and times, but we will share what we have. So just a quick look here at Cheyenne, where the locomotive lives. We've been there several times. Oh, right. And we've been able to, by attending public events, attend the steam locomotive shops. And we even got inside the firebox of this monster. That was interesting. Oh, man. This is uh, transporting it from California. They brought it up out of Pomona, California, and brought it here to Cheyenne for a complete restoration right down to the nuts, bolts, and gaskets. And uh, when it left here, for the uh, 150th anniversary of the Union Pacific, it was just spectacular. This is uh, Ed Dickens and his crew here at Cheyenne are doing some of the best locomotive restoration work in the world, frankly. So many neat things to see here at the Roundhouse in Cheyenne. Yeah, they just donated a lot of the equipment to another group and it's being restored now. And that's going to be amazing, but this is, when they have these very rare open houses, it's just spectacular. Now, as we mentioned, they're going to be departing Cheyenne June 30th, 2024, at 8 a.m., heading west. This takes them through the spectacular mountains there, most notably the first hill they climb, Sherman Hill. Here's uh, some footage of 3985 that I shot clear back in the 1990s and 1980s of the Challenger climbing Sherman Hill.
It usually takes them three days to cross Wyoming, so there will be a couple of layovers here. They'll be laying over in Rock Springs on July 1st, and they'll be laying over in Evanston on July 2nd, and they will be traveling from Evanston to Salt Lake on the 4th of July, and laying over in Salt Lake City on the 4th of July, and there will be public access at that point. From Ogden, they're going to head south to Salt Lake City where they will be laying over for an event on the 4th of July. I'm just guessing that the locomotive will be on display on the Rose Park Spur at 100 North Warm Springs Road simply because that's where they've displayed it in the past and I suspect they'll be displaying it there again.
but I'm not 100% sure on any of that. Now, it's very fun that they're going to be leaving Salt Lake City on the Western Pacific, which means they'll be crossing the, the very center of the Salt Flats uh, through this location here, paralleling Interstate 80, which also takes them right past the Salt Flats Speedway. From there, they will be crossing into Nevada, going over Silver Zone Pass, and that will be fun. A logical layover here would be Elko, but I'm not sure on any of this. That is a guess that it may be in Elko. What information is known is being released through the official Union Pacific Steam Club on Facebook. What we do know for certain is they will be traveling on the Western Pacific all the way to the California border and I'm hoping they will have a public display at the museum in Portola, California. One way or the other, they will be heading west down the Feather River Canyon, and this may well be the most spectacular part of this entire journey. This is the Y at Ketty, and they will be crossing through the Y at Ketty. Here is uh, 844, uh, on that track and this is the lower part of the Feather River Canyon again just uh, absolutely spectacular we don't have solid dates yet and I'll try to put up a video just as soon as we do they have announced that they will be laying over in the Sacramento area at Roseville California uh, with a public display on July 12th and 13th Sacramento is such an amazing city with great railroad history and uh, you would want to visit the uh, old Sacramento while you're there. Well, I can't think of a better place to lay over. Well, this is the home of the California State Railroad Museum. Exactly. Right here on the wharf. This is old Sacramento and this part of Sacramento has survived all the way back from the 1860s. Right and they've restored and rebuilt several of the structures here and right in the middle of the whole thing is the California State Railroad Museum. Right. And they're expanding the California Railroad Museum. Yes. They're making it like, I don't know, three three times bigger? Three times as big, wow, because it's already huge. And the expansion of Old Sacramento is just gigantic. They're going to be heading east uh, on the old SP, which is now the UP, of course, which takes them over Donner Pass and Donner Summit. <laughs> oh my gosh, if, if there's a competition for the Feather River, this would be it up here. This is the old original grade in snowsheds here, and you can now hike that going through the Donner Summit Tunnel and several other tunnels and walking the rest of this route for miles inside these concrete snow sheds. Karen and I have walked part of it and I have to tell you that it is, it's one of the most amazing things you can do is hike the Donner Summit Tunnel and on to the grade below Donner Summit Tunnel. This, of course, was all built in 1868 and 1869. This is a retaining wall. It's still there, the China Wall. This was all built by the Chinese laborers in 1868. And here's the upper part of the China Wall that uh, you walk right past if you hike the old original grade. Here are the, the workmen working on this grade in 1868 and 1869. It's worth taking a day, if you're coming to visit the big boy or just going to be in the area, it's well worth spending at least a day up here exploring these old grades at Donner Summit. Just an amazing bit of railroad history and some of the most spectacular scenery on the planet. And it's quite interesting to walk an old railroad grade, which is several miles long and is for the most part inside concrete snow sheds or tunnels. 
The new Union Pacific grade where the big boy will be traveling is uh, pretty much just below here. It crosses through this area in a new tunnel. It's difficult access to get back there and see that, but if you, if you can, it's absolutely spectacular. 4014 will be crossing back into Nevada here at Reno. It will be spending the night in Sparks, and I'm pretty sure they're not planning any kind of public display. Then proceeding on to Elko, where they'll be spending the night in Elko. I don't believe they're planning a public display, but it will be tied up at the walking path at uh, 5200 Union Pacific Way. And the next day on to Ogden, Utah. Now here's a very interesting part of the journey. At this point, they're gonna be crossing directly over the middle of the Great Salt Lake on the Lucin Cutoff. So here's an earlier picture of the Lucine Cutoff. Oh, that has to be early. Look at the wood trestle. It's all been salvaged. Now, you know, the entire deck on this is old growth redwood. Isn't that something? And that's all been turned into furniture and just all kinds of things. It's all been uh, repurposed. And then the, the trestle bents themselves down below um have also been repurposed mm -hmm. and uh, if you want some of this you can buy it there's oh, a <laughs> can we <laughs> there's a website i've been i've been tempted uh, to, yeah. to build one of our trestles out of actual trestle wood exactly and just a couple of years ago uh, this shipwreck emerged when the lake receded that was just almost funny and it was one of the boats used for building the <laughs> original uh listen cut off Anyway, this is where the original wood trestle sat crossing this part of the Great Salt Lake. Today, it's an earthen fill. Right. And this is what the big boy is going to be crossing on now is this earthen fill. It's a very short distance from there to Ogden, and the locomotive will be on display in Ogden on July 20th and 21st. I don't know for certain, but I would assume it will be on display at the Ogden Union Station. Ogden's a great place to watch the trains as they operate in and around Bridge Junction. From Ogden, 4014 will proceed north on the Ogden subdivision, which connects with the Oregon Short Line at McCammon. The most spectacular part of this trip takes us through Bear River Canyon. A few years ago, we saw 844 coming through here. Right. And, oh man, you talk about a spectacular place. And this is the Challenger, back when the Challenger was running. So when the big boy's coming through here, it's going to look vaguely something like this. Oh, if you can be in a parking place, this is the spot to film. McCammon, uh, 4014 will proceed down the Oregon Short Line, past Laba Hot Springs, and reconnect with the Union Pacific at Granger, Wyoming. 
and once back on Union Pacific tracks, the locomotive will head east and of course back to Cheyenne. Mm -hmm. And uh, they'll start gearing up for another excursion next summer. Oh, that'll be so much fun. And they run little small excursions yeah. from time to time. They'd be fun to ride there's, on. There's a rumor going around that they may be running an excursion with 844. Oh, well, that would be fun. Anyway, if, if so, we will be following that because this is one spectacular engine too. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Anyway, we will be posting more information about the schedule as we learn it. It's all brand new. It was just released uh, literally a few minutes ago. Yes. And uh, you wouldn't want to miss any of this as we post new video and, for that matter, chase the locomotive around. And so you want to make sure you're a subscriber to the channel. And uh, you might also want to hit the like button while you're thinking about <laughs> it. But in order to be a subscriber to the channel, you need to click on the upcoming blue button. Zoink! Right there, the blue button. Well, we're not sure how you found this video on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring, and we will see you here on Tuesday. Right. See ya. Bye-bye.